going on everybody happy monday night tuesday morning bachelor recap wow we are uh we are we're, we're kind of figuring this out as we go if you're watching this you might notice that i am recording from my house because it rained in la yesterday and 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 apparently la um has power outages when it rains so the studio is not working so we called an audible we're recording from our home and lauren zima has graced us with her presence yet again. And I got to say, Lord, I, I'm really glad that I experienced this power outage when I had you on the lineup because you're so easy to work with oh, and, wow. and we're friends. <laughs> it had been super weird. Had to have to wake up and yeah. like, you know, be like, hey, do you want to like come over and record a podcast? At I walked 8, in and I in the morning? made myself right at home. I said, what, what do you have for my coffee? You don't have oat milk. I it, this might be our first fight. I don't know why you don't have oat milk. I'm going to send you some. We'll talk about it later. But look at all the wine you have hanging behind me right now. If you guys are watching on the video, Nick has his own little wine collection. So we're, I don't know, either going to open some this morning or I'm coming back in a couple hours. Yeah, we even have some Spade and Sparrow back sure, there. Sure. A little yeah. shout out to KB supporting the friends. We got, oh, we, got, we got, we also have Wells, Wells Adams. Wells' family's wine, which yeah. is very good. He sent Chris and I some. I love it. So happy to be here and we'll be looking at all the nooks and crannies before I leave. What yeah. will we find? <laughs> it'll, it'll be fun. So uh, Lauren is going to help us break down. Is this episode four? Yes. Episode four of a Matt season. Uh, before we get into that, uh, you know, a couple of house notes. Let, let's Literally. See. Uh, house notes. Yeah, here, house, we is, uh, here we are. Here we are. Don't forget to, you know, check out our Ask Nick episodes. Uh, for those of you tuning in to our, our Bachelor recaps, uh, if you're interested in people sharing their tragic problems and stories and, and us telling them how to fix it. Really entertaining stuff. People seem to love it. Be sure to check that out. Uh, Vilefiles.com if you're interested in some merch. Um, check out our episode tomorrow. Ricky Williams joins us. Uh, if you are a football fan, uh, you uh, certainly know of Ricky Williams. Uh, he is a, a legend in the uh, football community. Uh, NCAA rushing record. Uh, once One time held that. Uh, long successful nfl career uh very interesting guy also incredibly into astrology he's uh dare i say an expert studies it uh it's uh and we have a a, a very rich discussion about that and how it plays a role in, in relationships and i gotta say it's the first time ever having a conversation about astrology my attention was captured he has me he really changed my perspective on how astrology can be a useful tool and not just something uh, that we like to talk about. So if you are interested in that, be sure to check that out. And uh, if there is nothing else, I, should we just get to this recap, Lauren? Let's get to it. I'm a little bit afraid to get to it on this one, honestly. <laughs> Probably destroy some of these women. Oh, it seems to be the theme. Uh, Lauren, wow. Yeah. Um, I guess for starters, I what where are you with regards to the women overall in the season? How are you enjoying the season? How are you enjoying Matt? I am very much enjoying the season because every week I don't really know what's going to happen next. I feel like we kind of keep getting new villains. And then now my big thing this week was I don't know who the villain is anymore and I don't a hundred percent know who to root for anymore because not only are the women really being pretty cruel, but I'm not seeing a lot of people except for our girl, Katie stand up for anybody unless it's not being shown. So I yeah. have a lot of questions. Yeah. That very, a lot of great points, <laughs> you know, which what we we've come to expect from you, Lauren. Um, wow, thank you. <laughs> No, you're absolutely right. I mean, like on the on that end, it makes it really interesting, um, especially this early on, that it's not predictable yet. Yeah. That it, it is also very early. It's so early that we're even getting new women showing up that uh, one of which Michelle seems like a legit contender for Matt's heart. Yes, very quickly. Uh, so it's still early, right? And I mean, Matt we've... posted on Instagram about her better late than never. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. Matt, Matt has been kind of breadcrumbing us with his social. I he, mean... uh, Serena, he called her hot. I think he tweeted something about 
It's that, really interesting to see Matt on social to me because I feel like Tyler Cameron gave him a boot camp in like how to be on social with this show. Even though we'd never seen him as a contestant on the show, I think Tyler seems to have given him some lessons and he's doing a good job and they're really playing having some fun together. I liked that he embraced the eyes open thing that he was like, yeah, yeah, I'm awkward. I'm weird. Like with this, let's just lean in. I liked that. How did you feel about the women coming in? The new ones? As it relates to like the decision. Not the women specifically, but just new women coming in at this stage in the game as a former lead. Like the show's decision to do that. That we're doing that period. I think it's great. You know, it's one of those things where at this point they constantly have to think of creative ways to, to make this, a fresh and compelling TV show. I mean, they have their mm-hmm. playbook, right? They have their, this is the show and it's always going to be that to a certain degree, but you have to change it up after so many seasons and it makes it interesting and, and it gets reactions from people and it's going to give us a lot to talk about because it, you know, it, it, it elicited a response from many of these women that was very unattractive <sighs> and, and it's going to give us a lot to talk about. So from a show standpoint, I think it's great. All you ladies out there, if you're into supporting other women, unlike the women on Matt's James season, then I have a great company for you. Bev is a female first canned wine brand that was founded to change not only the way a product is consumed, but the way an industry and culture has operated for generations. In an industry that is almost exclusively masculine, Bev is breaking norms and creating something for the female perspective that is approachable, fun, and consumer centric. They have five varietals, Rosé, Sauvignon Blanc, Pinot Gris, and Pinot Noir, as well as a limited edition extra fizzy sparkling white wine. Their wines are dry, crisp, and a little fizzy. Super refreshing and delicious. We've worked out an exclusive deal for the Vile Files podcast listeners. Receive 20% off your first purchase, plus free shipping on all orders. I suggest trying the best-selling Ladies' Night Variety Pack so you can check out all their delicious varietals. Varietals. What a fun word. Go to drinkbev.com slash V-I-A-L-L and use B-I-A-L-L at checkout to claim this deal. That's D-R-I-N-K-B-E-V.com slash V-I-A-L-L. Their four packs are great for gifting, hosting, social distance hangs, and obviously watching your favorite reality TV dating show. There's a lot of great food delivery apps out there, but some of them don't focus on Excellence. Well, I have one for you that does. Caviar is bringing all great local restaurants right to your door, literally. Hey, obviously a lot of people, they're, you know, we just don't have time to cook or we don't feel like cooking, but maybe you don't want to order fast food. You want to have quality food delivered right to your door and you can get that through Caviar. Sushi, dim sum, pizza, falafel salad, Get whatever food you're in the mood for on the Caviar app with delivery from your favorite local restaurants. Get Mediterranean, vegan, vegetarian, and more. It's super easy to find good food for whatever you're feeling. Looking for something that's not dinner? Caviar can also help you get ice cream, fun snacks, breakfast, a healthy lunch, and more. And just for our listeners, Caviar is giving 20% off your first order. Just enter promo code V-I-A-L-L at checkout. Remember, that's 20% off your first order with promo code V-I-A-L-L. Download the Caviar app and use offer code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off your first order. I think it's hysterical, uh, your boyfriend and how he he does it i i i I watch chris come in and he walked in like a secret agent yeah it's just (laughs) like if you're it's like i I have no doubt chris is a wonderful father but i gotta imagine he's so good at like the straight face that he does he fuck with his kids all the time you know where it's just like it's clearly he knows everything that's going on and he comes in like an emergency hey can i grab you yeah, right now like, we and have to we have to leave right now <laughs> and a straight face you know like and like it's clearly so good. i don't i don't think i could do that like he and like the like Chris must enjoy. He knows everyone's going to lose their shit. He must be just smiling on the inside. And it's like DEFCON 5. Look, He's quality. coming in. It's just very serious and very stoic. I mean, props props to Chris for the that. The man I makes mean, the most of every moment that we see him on television. You know, I when he saw him walk in, I was and then like watching him and Matt. Does he do that with you? Suits. Yeah, he walks in and he's like, um, all right, we have to talk about something. Can I see you outside? We got to send Nick some oat milk because 
<laughs> I just imagine he does this all the time. But what a gift that, he, you know, what it's a gift. with great power comes great responsibility. And I wonder if he, you know, hopefully he doesn't feel drunk with power with his ability to hold oh, a straight face. Man, um, I will say, you know, we, now that I think about it, we've actually talked about that sometimes before. That's so funny that you're saying this because we had this like minor uh, scuffle the other day. And I was telling him sometimes you you need to like work on your reactions a little bit in our relationship because oh my god i'm just realizing this now nick because i gave him a gift and i was like what do you think of it and he was so poker faced about it <gasps> wow we have a lot to, he's gotten too good he's yeah. gotten too good yeah okay. he was like well <laughs> find out next week on <laughs> he was like can i see you outside where, yeah. I'll, where i'll tell you what i think <laughs> I mean, it's it's amazing because I'm just like I know that he knows, right? Yeah. And he's it's it's pretty hysterical. Well, I loved it, and I, I agree with you. Look, we want the show to try new things all the time, right? That's what we love. That's how we always get headlines out of it, and interest in it, and discussion out of it. And also, this isn't something that's insane. We do this on Bachelor in Paradise. New people come in. In this case, they were unfamiliar faces, but I thought that it made sense. They were tying it into Matt having this record number of applicants. And I'm sure we'll get into the specifics of what was said more. But the argument from the women that it just wasn't fair that these oh. new women came in, I'm like, what's fair? You're on The Bachelor. <laughs> no, I mean, you talking I, about? I, there is no fair. There's no rules here. Like, yes, we might argue about whether... Like what somebody does, you know, did you steal the time? Was that rude? But in terms of rules, we're always told there really aren't rules. Of course, here. right. Or the rules can bend and change and grow and, you know, just like relationships. Well, An Anna starts off the, the week by saying she even suggests that she is responsible uh, along with maybe some of the other women that like we've we've uh, we have fought over silly things and that is beneath us. So let's not have any more, which is great. I mean, they they do this every season of like, let's restart, let's kind of reset. let's restart of yeah. kind of, you know, it's a little preview of, of you know, how we won't restart. How, how, yeah. <laughs> and, and she truly, I have so many problems with Anna. I, here's the thing. I don't like, as, it, as many people know on this show, I'm very reluctant to make judgments on one's character. Mm-hmm in real life mm -hmm. through watching them on the show. You know, soundtracks, edit, context. There are certain things that I, um, I'm i reluctant to do. For example, Chelsea. There are a couple moments this episode, the first, you know, first time I watched it, I was like, oh, Chelsea, I was so disappointed. I was so disappointed in many of the women. And yet I went back and watched and I'm not pre prepared to, to say that for sure because there, every time you got a reaction shot from Chelsea, mm. it was just Chelsea. And so that reaction shot, who knows? You're wondering where it may have Who knows? From. Okay, However, okay. but you look at Anna and, and Victoria, it is clear that there's so much data and so much information and so many comments from them about their behavior and the things they said that I'm comfortable with saying that I think Anna and Victoria uh, just kind of toxic they kind of have garbage character traits like i don't think they're great people i think there's a lot of insecurities and i think there's a lot of nastiness at their core as humans and i am not interested like you know i i how do you how do you uh anna have a, a four or five women show up i mean also here's the thing Anna is essentially admitting to us mm -hmm. that she knew yeah. she knew britney was coming on the show she knew she didn't know the timing. Because why else would she be talking to why else, other people in yeah, Chicago? Yeah, you know, you. she was framing it as if, like, Chicago is a super small city and everyone knows everyone. And <laughs> and somehow everyone in Chicago knew she was going on The Bachelor. And to, like, give her a heads up that this, this other girl you should watch out for. Clearly, Anna was telling her, you know, probably every friend she has that mm -hmm. she's about to go on the show. So word got around. And then Brittany told her friends and they have a mutual friend. They, they probably work in the, the service industry in Chicago. You know, they're Brittany. So what's Anna's job? Anna? What is her job? She's a copywriter. copywriter. Who knows? But she could be a copywriter <laughs> and also a bottle service girl mm -hmm. in Chicago, which is totally fine. We have got to learn more about the Chicago social scene. Being from the Midwest, I, I think our knowledge is lacking. I, I'm, 
I got I'm tapped been, in a little bit. I'm not tapped in. I haven't I haven't lived there since I was 17. I was like the Portillos. I don't know where are we hanging out. There, there's a handful of nightclubs. I don't know what the popular okay. nightclubs are now. They're My probably last big hit was the Stratford Square Mall. The, <laughs> they're probably different. And and it Brittany could have probably maybe is a bottle service girl, okay. right? And and maybe even Anna was or no has a friend who is, which is totally fine. So either way. They roam in certain certain circles. She heard some rumors and then decided to like. It, she keeps admitting that she knows it's just a rumor, and yet keeps insisting on talking about it. And 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 that's that's just a, a terrible quality to have. So so you combine the fact that she knew Brittany was coming on the show. Mm -hmm. Clearly, everyone knows Brittany. Even when she was talking to Matt, said, "I've been sitting in a hotel room for a week." You know what I'm saying? Like it's not her choice. It's not her. Clearly, they do the women not. They, they, I know they don't know what's going on, right? right? I know this is all new to them. Yeah. But they they sat in a hotel room for a period of well, days. Well, that was what was wild to me about the time argument and what's fair. I was like, this girl's been alone in a hotel room for three weeks. Let her speak yeah. to a person. I'd be like, you know what's fair? You getting some human contact right now? Yeah. Do you want to talk to any of us? I, I, what what skincare do you use? Like, let's have a discussion because you haven't had a human conversation. In this weeks. argument that I've been here for three weeks, right. you know, three bachelor weeks or whatever, and I haven't had a chance to talk to him right. yet. So, like, get in line and wait your turn uh no it's quite the opposite you've essentially wasted three weeks i don't know what probably because matt's yeah. not remotely interested in you and you know what that's okay we all need to accept the fact that in the world there's plenty of people not remotely interested in us and they don't want to sit down with us or invest time with us yeah He's just not that into you. You know what was interesting and to me was that he kept four of the five new women, which made me think he really, he hates, really knows who he's into. He's really disinterested in all yeah. these women who are, you know, are there. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting, and I thought about this. There is an insane amount of women so currently on the show, given that it's week four. And I, I haven't. You know, I don't know if you've talked to Chris. I haven't talked to any of the producers about this, but I got to assume this is silly based on the fact that they don't have to travel. So there, you can be like, you know what? It's a little nutty. and But the fact that we're, we're just going to keep 20 women. Well, they have said many times. I feel like we've heard that line several times of a record number of women applied. How many women applied? So I, it seems to me like it's almost just part of the season that all these women were so into Matt that we're having more women than usual. Matt is clearly a catch. <laughs> nice guy. He's very attractive. That's bullshit. Like you don't think a record number of women apply? Maybe it we doesn't also matter. had so much time it, for women. To it apply. also it that but I, oh, I don't that about. that okay. doesn't matter. Okay. There could have been five million people who applied, okay. right? Mm -hmm. But that is not you why. Mean in terms of why we're keeping people, yeah, why we're keeping extra people, why we're bringing women in late, right? Because you know Chris is just like, well, there's a record. You know, everyone wants you, so now like oh, yeah. well, you know Chris is wait, Chris is acting like they just showed up. You know, oh, <laughs> like, right. like the season started, Chris got a call and we're like, I want to well, meet Matt. They're like, well, hey, I guess we'll have to let you on. <laughs> like, clearly that's not happening. Right. I see what you're saying that like logistically. Okay. It's impossible to travel like 25 women. Well, it's more expensive. It's more expensive. It's harder. <laughs> but because they don't have to travel, that gives them a freedom I'm to sure. see like, you know, let's just keep. A couple extra people for a couple extra reads because it's going to drive everyone nuts. Well, I think it's like if you're going to be stuck somewhere, find new and interesting plot devices to use. So great, you know, because it's fantastic. they don't have travel. So let's counteract it with bringing more women in. And obviously it worked because it riled these other women up so much. There was something that Anna said, and I'm getting back to her, but... Oh, we she, can we can bash her all can, episode. I've, I'm sorry. I just like it was so disappointing yeah. and kind of disgusting behavior. I have to say here's because last week she last week she was saying last week I wasn't turned on Anna. Last week I was. No, she seemed fine. Yeah. Last week I, I had like a 180 on her this week pretty much because last week I was actually thinking some of what she said made sense. But I think this week with her interaction with Brittany, you're talking to you're you've already formed an opinion about someone who you have had no direct seemingly interaction with, which is, <laughs> she said this multiple <laughs> times. I don't know. Her. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Her. Know I don't her. Know I don't her. Know. Yeah. At least last week 
you know, I, I think the women were saying they felt like Sarah was isolating herself or she like, whatever. I'm like, at, at least whatever you want to say, at least you, you're interacting with that person. Anna kept saying, I don't know her. And then what really stuck out to me was when she was talking to Brittany, when she confronted her about these escort rumors, I think she said something like, I know this is a horrible thing. Thank you. To I was just about to. <laughs> no, she goes, she goes, what? she goes, I know this is a horrible thing to say. I'm sorry. And the next words out of her mouth were, would you like to address these accusations? Right. And she was like, I'm like, babe, you made, what do you, you know, you made them, right? What, how many people are in this conversation? And then at the end she goes, I'm glad we had this chat. I was like, what? No, I, 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 I again, We're I, flabbergasted. I think Anna sucks. I think it really seemed to me like she's gotten very swept up in like, the environment or something like I, I I'm not saying that's and I'm not saying that's all of her I'm just saying the person I saw last week to this week it feels like she's just gotten really amped or something like I think her and Victoria together you know how people can sometimes fuel each other's characteristics or something it's like when I was watching that scene of the two of them on the couch and they were just bashing everybody Victoria by the way is saying stuff at this point where I don't even know I can't even I'm not even totally offended by it because it's so it's insane. ridiculous I'm like, but, the, but but it's so insane. But she is a toxic human. Like, this is a perfect episode that, and I've said this, you know, on our Ask Nick episodes, mm -hmm. this is a perfect reminder that the brain requires stimulation and it prefers pain to boredom. And mm -hmm. Victoria's in it, like living proof that like when people ask when they watch this show, like Victoria's been so outrageous to your point that there are people that's like, she must be a paid actor. She must be a producer plant. They don't have to do that. People in this world, in this country are insane enough. And you get certain people that are so desperate for attention yeah. and they'll go about it anyway. And Victoria is proof of this. Like she knows that what she's doing, but she doesn't care because she just loves the attention. She loves the stimulation. She loves being involved in this crap. And there is and, and there's no limit. She has there is no level of like a thing she won't say as long as she's yeah. getting attention. There was a moment to me and it was a couple weeks ago when you saw her talking to a producer. And I was sort of glad they included that because her she was saying to the producer something like, see, none of them like ugh, they don't like me. They don't get me. And I was like, oh, no, that's. So that's I because I've never heard people or not. It's been a minute since I've heard people so strongly say they believed someone was an actor. And like, I don't think she is. I, I the stuff she's saying is so and she's so casual in her. I mean, she would have to be a Meryl Streep. I would be like, actually, if she is an actor, I'm going to be like, well, get yeah. her in movies. Get her I, an agent. She's really yeah. good. Yeah. 100. Yeah, totally. I'm impressed. She could be the first Oscar winner to come out of The Bachelor because I'm on board. I don't know. But this stuff she's saying is just so over the top that I think I sort of wondered if I was there in person as Katie confronted Victoria, like, what would I be doing? How would I handle this? Because we're not seeing a ton of the women confront the, the, the people who are saying these things, which is making me wonder, are they in agreement? Are they, do they just want to stay quiet? Is Victoria so off the wall that they don't want to risk engaging with her i i'm in, i'm very interested to hear once we get to a tell-all where everybody's head is at we talk a lot about gut health on this show and how important it is for your overall immune system and huzzah is making it super easy with their wonderful and delicious probiotic seltzer what more can i say about a super convenient probiotic that tastes good and helps you feel better helps you with your digestion uh, my favorite flavor is the raspberry lemon after I've tried it. It used to be strawberry hibiscus, which is great, but that raspberry lemon is so tasty. Tangy, fruitness, and a citrus spark with zero sugar and just five calories. Celebrate those rare, cherished, live out loud moments with Huzzah, a bold new probiotic seltzer with all the healthy benefits. Stock up on Huzzah's probiotic seltzer by using code VIALL for 20% off your order at drinkhuzzah.com. That's code V-I-A-L-L for 20% off at drink, H-U-Z-Z-A-H.com. It's a new year and making sure your house smells wonderful without putting toxic chemicals in your home. Natural Habits Essential Oils is there for you to diffuse essential oils in your house. If you struggle with headaches or you just need a calming scent to help you relax you at the end of the day. Also our roll-ons are our wonderful solutions 
that are better than, say, taking ibuprofen every day, which is really bad for your gut health. Relaxation Rise is my favorite blend to diffuse in the house in the morning. It gives me that kind of fresh morning feeling. NHOils.com, code LOVE for 30% off. That is code L-O-V-E, NHOils.com, code LOVE for 30% off. I think it's really important to point out that anyone not part of the main group is definitely clearly part of Matt's favorites. Like anyone who's part of this mean group, count them out. Like they are not relevant. Even Katie, I don't see it necessarily with Matt. I, I mean, I've said this the whole time. Like Katie is going to go home the week before hometowns. It's a lot. But, you know, Katie is a voice of reason. She was, the, you know, so like we only need one voice of reason. We don't need because if we have all these voices of reason, then we don't get the kind of temper tantrum from all these other women. They feel empowered and emboldened mm. to act the way they are. And it's seven against one, not seven against seven. And I think that's kind of why you don't see them. Yeah. And and that's, I'm, I'm, per, I'm fairly confident in, in how that all played out that way. Yeah. Well, you just kind of let it happen. Then it becomes she said, she said, and all this back and forth thing. It's just so interesting to me, like how much I feel like it escalated to this week because. I guess it's the it's the device of seeing how they react to totally new people who they don't know. Like when that beauty queen came in and Victoria oh, gosh. instantly told her she wasn't the queen, took the crown off her head. I mean, I'm I'm now like reading some direct quotes, but Victoria said she, Victoria doesn't know Britney at all. She says Britney's straight up serial killer vibes. Victoria says Catalina's the dumbest hoe I've ever met. MJ says if you're telling me the first time that things get hard, pack your bags. Bye. It's like, and then I, maybe my favorite part was when Victoria wanted an apology from Katie because she, Victoria, called the other women trash. Was that what had happened? Victoria said something like, take the trash out. Katie confronted her and Victoria was like, I want you to apologize to me because I have the right to express myself completely. I mean, no, Victoria sucks, and I don't think she's that smart. She got schooled by Katie because, like, Victoria Victoria is that type of toxic person yeah. that, whether it's a boyfriend or a friend, what she does, it's the truth is irrelevant to Victoria. You can't Context reason. I realize is, you can't All reason. she does is just spit out trash out of her mouth, and she does it with such consistency, and she does it where she believes what she... It's like, like all she does is gaslight, in a sense, because, like, she is with a lot of people m very capable of making everyone think they're they're crazy because they're like this person I'm trying I I assume, most people in this world assume that the average person has a level of like sanity and they're going to say right. sane things and Victoria just says insane things constantly so you're like what the fuck is going on I think that's why I I kept writing down it's just laughable I I don't think I would have confronted her in this situation because I would have been like, she's so off the wall. Like, yeah. I'm not even going there. Props to Katie <laughs> for, for like Katie was the perfect person to have that conversation. She didn't flinch on mm -hmm. like, uh, like I'm proud of my vibrator. loved it. I, I'm like, <laughs> I'm not going to let you shame me for like being mm -hmm. sex positive because I don't, it's, it's tough in that situation. Like sometimes people just like don't know what to say with people who say crazy shit. And I'm glad that Katie mm -hmm. was able to have that conversation. She she handled it wonderfully. She was, uh, I mean, obviously Katie was a big star this episode, and she had to, had Katie to fight was the group. Our, our vibe of reason. Yeah, our, our, our vibrator of reason. <laughs> uh, I also just want to point out Anna, who said early on when when the women showed up, she said, "I'm literally losing my mind, or I'm going crazy, or or something to that effect." If you have the self awareness to know that you are going crazy. Maybe everything that you want to say or do after that might be a bad idea. <laughs> I don't know. Just take a step back. Take a step back. But no, there, there's it's the, uh, uh, so I you, mean, you, this episode, I will say, and I, I was sort of reflecting on I th like when I interview um, people before the season, the leads, I always ask kind of what's the vibe of your season going to be? But the thing is, the lead sets one vibe and the contestants set another, right? Yeah, Matt has no idea what's going know, on Matt, in this Matt's, house right now. I, I, <laughs> I, I couldn't have, uh, when I, I think when I asked Matt that question, he, I actually don't even remember what he said. But like Peter's season, right? Kind of catty influencers. Because people were, remember people were annoyed on Peter Weber's season with how much the women were I fighting. thought about that watching yes. this. We're like, the, the tone at the end of Peter's season was, I kind of hate all these women. 
it, from Bachelor Nation. It was yeah. like, there's really no one to root for. We didn't get a Bachelorette out of that group. I also think that's why you're not seeing, like, it, there was a clear separation between the cattiness. And I don't I don't think that's going to happen this season. But that's why you have, you had Br Abigail staying out of the drama. You had Bree stay out of the drama. So well, like, that's what I'm saying. They were, they were kind of protected. Yes. They're very much. And again, I, I don't, I, I'm also assuming they weren't part of that, but no matter, we don't know if they defended it or well, we there don't. there was some discussion of it last week with Sarah. And what I noticed when Sarah was talking to the women was Abigail said, but like, Sarah, we don't know you. And like Serena said, Sarah, your behavior is toxic or whatever. And then this week we kind of saw some of those women not involved and we really kind of got isolated to us who are the mean girls. I don't know another word. I was like this. We had catty yeah, influencers like, on Peter's season and this season is the mean girls. <laughs> so, so mean girls. They're vicious. They're. It, I mean, it was hard. It was hard to watch. I, I was disgusted and dis, I was disappointed. I was just like, oh, I'm so disappointed. Mm. I'm so disappointed in this behavior. I, it's like, I mean, again, I can't, I can't say enough just how like there's one thing of not being your best self on that show and letting the environment get the most of you and, and maybe being a little snarky. But Anna consciously knew what she was doing by spreading this rumor. She said, I know it's a there was a look on her face. Say. You could, I know it's a horror. she you she was giving an ITM. She's talking to a producer, mm. and I can I can imagine how this is going out. They're like, well, what have you heard? And when Anna was saying, well, I heard she's an ass. She's smiling. She she just fucking loved the juice. She was like, you know what? I probably shouldn't, but you know what? It's too good not to. And she said it. She said it with a smile. I just want to point out that sex workers deserve love. Even oh, if that was Brittany happens too. to yeah. be an escort, you know what? I don't give a shit. Do Good you. for her. Be safe. Do your thing. But yeah. you know what's most likely the case? She probably does some bottle of service in Chicago, and she probably meets a lot of people who spend money, and she's friends with them. So what? I mean, I don't even want to spend any time trying to defend Brittany because there's nothing to defend. Mm -hmm. I don't care because whatever she is, like to be called out in that context and called a slut or a whore or, or any of these names. Oh my God, is, I is forgot like, the Victoria thought, the oh my thing God. she thought was so clever. Slore. I was like, babe, this is not like in the bring it on mean girls lexicon of even being a creative insult. We gotta, we gotta do better, you know? You seem to be a little more incensed by Anna. And I'm wondering if it is because of what we're saying of where we're sort of like, Victoria's so off the wall, but Anna seems to be a little more grounded in. Maybe, but like, I, I, it's more Anna was the one who started that rumor. I mean, yeah. certainly Victoria loved it. She went along with it. She yeah. embraced it. And I'm not saying that Anna and Victoria are better or worse than each other. Mm -hmm. They both suck, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But I'm just focusing on Anna because I do think there's a part of Victoria that she's, I mean, you know, she's not a paid actor, but I think she's acting out. I think she's putting on her own performance. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Anna is is just so disillusioned and so in her own own needs in, in bullshit that she isn't thinking for a second how, how harmful her words are and how toxic her behavior is. And well, that's a huge, I don't, I don't think here's a, what's different about Victoria and Anna is mm -hmm. I don't think Victoria gives a shit whether she's toxic or not. I think Anna thinks she's actually being righteous. You know what I'm saying? I think that I, I would give Anna credit that maybe if you like explain this to her, she might mm -hmm. feel bad, but it doesn't excuse her where I don't think Victoria gives a shit. It's the groundedness yeah. for me. <laughs> but she still sucks. She sucks so bad. I, the thing about an accusation like that is that as Brittany said, and as Katie said, when they, when Kate, Katie was like our, like I was in a sorority, so I, this is a rough, but you know, you have like a house mom. Katie feels like that vibe to me. Like she's yeah, like, let me talk to everybody. People are, <laughs> we're getting nods. Good people. Like she's, she's talking to everybody. She's counseling everybody. She's like standing up for people. She's voice of vibe of reasoning it. And what they said was so right that this is just this accusation that becomes a, she said, she said that she can't really defend herself against because properly I mean, because Anna had Anna didn't come with any type of receipts Anna had nothing backing what she was saying so then it just becomes something you have to talk out and you're not even talking about anything real well that's the problem in that world is that accusations they don't need like yeah 
I mean, you can accuse anyone of anything in that world. You're mm. you're here to get famous. Immediately, you're on the defensive. Immediately, you're uh, have well, to I you thought... have to explain why you're not there yeah. to be famous or you're, why you're there for the right reasons. And so, Gail, you know, that happens. That world, you kind of know what you're signing up for to a certain degree. But, but this this accusation point. of um, well, when Katie said to Matt, this is something that can really affect people's lives. Yeah. I was like, yeah, this is this is not the I mean, I'm personally of the belief that at this of, at this point that it's impossible to come on the show without s- some desire for fame. Because what I just I'm sorry. I'm yeah, you're you're, it. you're not everybody's gray area. There's no black and white. I'm here for love or not. I, yeah, you're, I, you don't go on the show and you hate attention. Right. Because you know you're going to get it no matter what. It's yeah. it's impossible to not. So and you, yeah, and that's fine. But this is when you're talking about something that can affect somebody's life. I, it it just felt bigger. It was bigger, and it was baseless. And I'm interested to see how Matt handles it. I sort of hate when we get in these moments. Although I know it's, you know, it it, it whether it's the Bachelor or the Bachelorette when we get to these moments, which we always have, where the lead has to come in and set everybody straight. I'm like, we're all supposed to be adults here, and yet that is why I love watching I, it. <laughs> I actually, in that regard, I'm kind of envious of Matt. If oh, you want to go in there? No, here's the thing. I've said this before. It's just it's different when you're the bachelor versus the bachelorette. Historically, we it's it's you know we're okay with the bachelorette coming in and yelling at the men for being, mm. but like and not that you want to as the bachelor, but you have to be very careful not to be a dick and lecture some bad behavior, mm-hmm. right? But these women are so toxic and so bad that like I think every bachelor gets frustrated. I mean, every bachelorette gets frustrated and that frustration, you just, you see some of this acting out and you're just like, yeah, you're, you're frustrated because you're just, you want this to work out. Like yeah. Matt, you know, again, Matt, Matt also might like attention and he's certainly aware of baby, you know, the, all the benefits that come with being the bachelor, but the sincerity that comes from the lead being like, I really want to meet someone is genuine and real. And I believe Matt's sincerity as much mm-hmm. as I believe anyone else's, the lead wants it. And you just... You see this behavior, like how is this helping me find someone? And you get really frustrated. So it'd be kind of like fun for Matt to be like, "What the fuck?" And he <laughs> he's gonna and he won't look because everyone's gonna be so mad at everyone's gonna be so mad at this women that Matt's gonna be able to be like, "This is like not what I want." And and it, he'll be able to send them yeah, home. It'd so, be kind of fun I, because like, like it's so it's so stressful when you break up yeah. with people in that world. To just like. Yeah, it's just so stressful, and he he gets kind of a free pass. I love it. It's... You're you're wishing you had women this bad so that you could have easily confronted the. Problem. Well, just because you can vent and just be like, you know what? Because you, you kind of know, you see it. You're like, you're you guys suck. You're not taking this seriously. You're you know, and you're just like, you don't have to put up with it. And Matt's gonna, it'll be a he's gonna have to he's gonna take some frustration, but he'll be able to like <laughs> release his frustration on some of these toxic it, women. It's also interesting to me because I feel like with the premiere, I walked away thinking, oh my gosh, we have, excuse me, so many amazing women, and now I feel so differently. And I'm hoping that this is gonna get worked out a little bit with Matt, and then we're gonna see you know, kind of the the cream rise to the top again because that was how I felt after night one. Like, God, they're stunning and they, we've got lawyers here and we've got like some really, really, you know, people with amazing stories. But I haven't heard a lot of those like personal stories yet. I, I think it's coming. I liked his date with Michelle this week. We have, yeah. I mean, uh, Michelle, rock star. I mean, I loved his, the, the one-on-one. There was something about Michelle that, you know, last week we were just like, who's going to be top four? Yeah. I could see Michelle Easy being top four. I mean, it's, I, well, Matt is a great batch in the sense that he is really good at, uh, he has a good poker face, or maybe it's because he's never been in love mm. that he's just like, I, oh, you're great and you're great. And let me explain why I could marry you and let me explain why I could marry you. And I'm just like, oh, who does he like? It's, <laughs> I think it's harder with other, bachelors where you just kind of like hey he's just different around here when like when ben was with lauren it was just mm-hmm. like i mean he might like and he's nice but like there's he's really different yeah. and matt's able to kind of it's i can't really tell yet i was like I, serena kind of came out of nowhere but matt was like very complimentary and very focused on her but with michelle i mean wow it was like she he was saying time flies with you yeah i feel like i've seen all i need to see I, I, what i liked we talked about these real 
connections they had, like both being athletes and they both work with kids. There was some real grounded foundation to work from in terms of building their relationship. It was it was really nice. I didn't understand the scavenger hunt. I didn't know what they were looking for, where they were going. Doesn't matter. Can't figure out if I'd want to be in a hot balloon, a hot air balloon that wasn't going anywhere. That was another question I had. But they seemed to have a lot of fun together. And then they were in the car museum. I'm like, we are all over the place on this date. It makes a lot of sense mm-hmm. that one of the new women got the next one-on-one just because it's you know well, going to freak everyone right. out. That being said, who got that one-on-one? That's all Matt, right? Matt clearly, M- Michelle, out of all the women who came out of at least mm-hmm. the four, Michelle was yeah, his pick, mm-hmm. right? Brittany... He might think she's attractive. I don't know. I don't really, I don't think she's going to be. Do you think it means anything at this point who he's kissing with his eyes open? No. I I, I can't. Brittany got the widest eyed kiss yet, I thought. I think, I think people make way too big of a deal about this open eyed kiss thing. He was kissing Michelle with his eyes closed. I don't know. Here's what I think happens. (laughs) I think everyone. Was it it really sunny? It was quite bright. I think think everyone, (laughs) including you and me and your boyfriend, sometimes has their eyes closed and sometimes have it open. I have never opened my eyes during a kiss. I don't buy it. And I think if you had... Never. I'm comfortable in saying this, Lauren, that if you had a camera on you 24-7, you would see things about yourself that would surprise even you. Things? Sure. I do not have my eyes open during a kiss. I cannot imagine what you've you're never, seeing. You've never opened your eyes during a kiss? Well, I sometimes you so. enjoy looking at the things that you find physically attractive. But when you're up close, all you're seeing is like pores. Well, you do know? you mean if you're kissing someone and, and you're like, like, and you're not to get all... Need- but I'm if you're exfoliant, like where are we at? Why does it? Why does making out have to be like braille? Like you know, like why do you have to feel your way around? Maybe you, I don't know. Because no one looks good that up close. Because you need to close your eyes to preserve. But also, like you could be looking down. I, I think Matt's getting some tough luck when it this this I'm eye not, open. I'm just saying. I think it. I actually think it means something. I think he got lost in the kiss with Michelle. The eyes were closed. Eyes were closed when kissing Serena P. I'm thinking this is a this is a tell. Maybe, maybe. on Matt's poker face. Well, I well here's a tell of Matt's okay. when he says, uh, "Thank you for sharing. Mm. You look pretty." <laughs> he doesn't like you. <laughs> oh, who did you notice that with? He said that to Chelsea, oh. and he kind of says that to him. He's like, "Well, thank you for sharing." You're very pretty. You know, like he clearly yeah. is I will not tell into you, you. I've interviewed him twice now. Matt is just a very good conversationalist and someone who's really easy to talk to. So. I do think that that is, I think it's like when you go on a date, I mean, I think we've probably all had dates like this, or maybe we went on a date with somebody and like we could keep the conversation going and we're talking and that other person thinks it went really well. And we're like, oh my God, that was such a mediocre date. But you know, I, I, I could talk to a wall if I needed to. I think we might be encountering that with Matt. I think that he can I, just talk to people. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why I think it, he does. He's like, we, it's when, with these one-on-ones, it's like, I don't know, who does he like? Because mm-hmm. he's. He's really, he's very present with all of them. And that makes a, a great bachelor. So he's doing a great job that way. But I mean, I, I'll tell you what, the Michelle date, that was a great date. It was a romantic yes. date. They knew, like, they they knew that date would be, like, would kind of stimulate a lot of emotion. Mm-hmm. And, and and those dates are often reserved for, for people the lead is potentially really into. Um, I was really impressed with Michelle. In fact, Michelle was other than Katie, like a hero for me this episode because she was very redeeming and very likable, and she seemed to have high character mm-hmm. in an episode where there's so much low character and so much like pettiness and and nastiness that yeah. You know what I also didn't get about any of it was just even the point, and that's what raised questions for me because if you're going to get angry or, or confront someone about stealing time from you, okay, well at least that's cause you're, I don't know, cause they wronged you personally in some way you feel, or it, because you feel like you want to get more time with the, these women kept saying it's new versus old, the new girls versus the OGs. And I was just thinking, why <laughs> this is it's not so ridiculous. The amazing race. It's not a team competition. Why are you doing this? What's the point? You Why got are- that. <laughs> you got that with the Tasha's guys too. Oh yeah. This, this is like, 
on steroids. This is like very concentrated and more impactful, but you got a little bit of that. Even some, you know, when I was, you know, talking to Noah and, and talking to some of like the guys, they even kind of referenced, it's like, you know, there's a, there is a bond, right? Sure. Like I certainly, like when I showed up on Caitlin's season, it was like, there's this weird, you know, you're not part of the the cool group, the in group. Oh, there's I a you did experience. Yeah, this. there's a the, oh. there's a camaraderie there. But this, it what's you know at least I crashed it. Like these women know it's a COVID world. They they know, especially Anna, that like they've been waiting. And like, it was multiple women brought in by the show. It wasn't um I came and crashed the date of my own, you know, apparent accord. It was like, no, we're bringing in, I mean, Chris came in, we're bringing in new women. This is what's happening. So, yeah. And again, but it's just, it doesn't do you any good to be like, it's us versus them is not going to get you anywhere. It's not that type of competition show. So it made no sense to me. But, you know, um, we liked Michelle. We, I, I thought Michelle was fantastic. And then, so we had the one-on-one date. Yes. We also had the group date where they raced in the pumpkins and poor Maggie was just out there. Maggie. Wow. Paddling what a, around. Interesting. What happened there? And I like her and I yeah. want to see more of her. Well, she like, listen, she's, we've never had a, a cast person, you know, she's from, from like literally Ethiopia. Ethiopia yes. So, you know, the diversity in this, this season has been fantastic. Mm-hmm. Like even Chelsea talking about kind of her childhood experience, mm-hmm. uh, you know, why she cut her hair yes. was, I don't know, like I, I, I learned something, you know, and yes. that, that's cool to kind of just hear different people's perspective mm-hmm. that we don't get to usually see on the show. I love Maggie. Uh, Maggie, you know, certainly, but like clearly there's a disconnect there Something's between Maggie and, right. and yeah. Here's what I don't get about Maggie being off in like the corner of the lake, which isn't even a thing. But that felt like a metaphor for where things are at with her and Matt. She's like, really? Like, she's sweet and we like watching her. But Matt's like, Maggie, I can't find you in the lake. I don't know. It's like, here's what I don't get. She's a pharmacist. She's clearly had to take a lot of chemistry classes. It's in the kind of the science (laughs) group. And you saw her paddle. And while maybe she's not great at physics, okay. she can't be that inept with physics that like she, You're talking oh, about her awareness of water. Her awareness <laughs> of like paddling, where like she's gonna skim just a little <laughs> bit of water. Like it's just like take a pause, Maggie. Look at the situation and and think about how you might row <laughs> yourself to so shore. Adorable. She's clearly smart. She was you know? so cute. I was just like, I love this little uh moment of levity and a little humor because I needed it amongst all this. Ben Higgins couldn't have said it's a foot race to the finish more if his life depended on it. He really wanted to make sure we knew the rules in this strange fall into love competition. My favorite shot of it was when Victoria wound up in the squirrel costume just on her hands and knees digging through the leaves. I felt that we needed that and I was glad that they gave that to us. I'm a little surprised that, is it Mari? Yes. I She's thought gorgeous. I thought she had some villain vibes. I thought she'd be in the drama, and I thought it was interesting that she wasn't because what we have we haven't seen we haven't seen her really have any time with Matt. I so know. I don't like. There's, Where does she stand? She's kind of falling in the middle. Yeah, I think honestly, I think she's gonna she's gonna be gone soon. Like, like clearly he likes Bree. Bree getting the group date rose was hey. Mm, I still care. I like you. Don't you know the group the group date roses are you know they're kind of tools like they're you know. He that imagine he like everyone's probably likes Bree. She's not part of the drama. They get it right. Mm-hmm. But if he gave it to one of the new girls, oh my god, that would just. But instead of doing that, he gave it to Bree because we still this show is still about love, and we yes, and 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 they're always gonna walk a fine <laughs> line between like making everyone lose their mind and allowing Matt to find love and Brie getting that rose was significant for Brie in that don't lose your mind. Right. Just so you know, I like you. Yes. And, and so Brie already having a one-on-one and a group date rose is significant. And you know, I keep, I'm, I I don't know, but like, so we have Chelsea, we have Lauren, they've also got group date roses. Usually if you go Mm -hmm. back and watch prior seasons, that's kind of a a preview of a potential one-on-one coming up. Mm -hmm. It's like, Hey, it's not your time yet. Here's a, here's a, you know, but I got to say, I'm just surprised the Chelsea three thing threw, threw me off because regardless of she actually said it or not, that's how they aired it. Mm-hmm. And it made her very unlikable. Wait, said what? When Katie, again, was lecturing the group. Oh, yeah. And, and, and sound and, and the only kind of yeah. the only sanity that was coming out of anyone's mouth was from Katie. 
and they showed Chelsea sounding very petty mm-hmm. and sounding very catty and and she, they made it look like Chelsea was part of the mean girl group. Yes. And so to me, and then you look at the fact that she had some specific time with Matt and then she got a group at Rose. Those were kind of two, it was like a, a juxtaposition of like, I'm very confused. Mm-hmm. The, and the show has me confused. And like, wh- what are you trying to tell us about you know, Chelsea? Like, are we, you know what I'm saying? Like, is there something else there? I'm also interested just because Matt, again, wasn't on the shows before. I'm like, how, you know, it, it's interesting to see who he's giving roses out to where without him having ever been a contestant before and being like a little new to it all. You know, it's making me. Like, I, I agree. I was surprised by the Chelsea Rose. I was kind of surprised by the Brie Rose, honestly. I thought that I didn't know she would have needed that reassurance that quickly. I mean, well, but good to give it to her. I, I, the Brie doesn't surprise me because okay. I think Matt likes her and we, she needs everyone needs re, reassurance. And you don't want to happen to Brie what happened to Sarah. I mean, I don't think Brie's capable of doing what Sarah did, mm-hmm. but like everyone's human in that world. It's very confusing and. It's like you need validation, especially if you're there's an yeah. expectation of, you know, falling in love and even considering getting engaged and things like that. But, yeah, I am confused about the Chelsea one because, like, is Lauren and Chelsea going to get one on ones? Maybe. Probably. I'm just more confused by the pettiness that we saw from in a little bit like Lauren was like one of the girls that were she was. She, peripherally petty she was like yeah she was like in that group and she had some that's what i'm saying it's hard to tell like this episode did help me notice who i zoned in on as like oh you're really saying some wild stuff but there are some who are like we've seen serena c say a few things there have been some people that have said a few things but not a ton of things. the only thing that i remember serena saying is when the girls first showed up she was like hey listen we're like, we're just all fucked up yeah. in the head right now. <laughs> and, you know, it seemed like Serena was trying to just like yeah. almost be helpful. Yeah. And I, it didn't seem very mean girl ish. Uh, but like MJ, very disappointed in MJ because I thought MJ was like kind of a very nice. Mm. I thought like, I thought MJ had a lot of Katie in her where, you know, mm. like she's probably nice and sweet and cool and down to earth. But MJ seems to have a pretty nasty side to her. <sighs> You know, I don't I it makes me want to go back and look at everything again. I keep thinking about how the there just wasn't reason for it. You know, like there was these women came in and there wasn't a reason to go this viciously for them. And the ones who did go this viciously, it shines a spotlight on like on who they are, I guess. Are, are there any women that we didn't hear from mm-hmm. about the drama? that haven't got any attention from Matt. Because like you can make like mm-hmm. Rachel, Brie, Abigail, mm-hmm. they've all have had some sort of validation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Serena, validation. Jacenia, class act. <laughs> <laughs> she had all the reason in the world to like. We found one. So yes, just, cheers to Jacenia. Thank you. know, you. as a shout out to Jacenia. Big shout out. Uh, Maggie. Maggie. Shout out to Maggie. Shout out to Maggie. Did she, she, legend has it, she's still out there on the lake. Yeah. Yes. Um. So anyone who hasn't had any mat time, right. who wasn't part of the penniness, yes. I just want to say congratulations. You. You're you're a decent, good human <laughs> natured person. And, and and anyone else, fuck you. I And it's just like, I, does that talk? I was so nasty. It was so, such nasty behavior. Hard pivot right now. Do you think Matt has worn more turtlenecks than you did? I only wore one. I, listen, it felt like you wore more. Maybe it was a powerful. It was. One a, it was. A, it was a very. It was a. <laughs> it was thick. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was unforgettable. It was uh, hot, and you had me like looking. It was yeah. itchy. Uh, Matt looks good in a turtleneck. Um, so good I'm for him. Wearing one right now. Yeah, clearly he likes them. He's yeah. he's embraced them, and I mean he looks he looks good in them. So I've sure no no criticism. I just didn't on know this. how you felt about passing on the mantle of like the turtle well, wearing bachelor. Uh, I don't think I wore it as well as as <laughs> some of the other ones, but I also think they've like I did I, I didn't particularly love my my turtleneck. I did. You did? Yes. It was just really you. it was really it was really hot. No, you should wear more. Um. We got in the promo this sort of West Side Story-esque 
walking moment where the two, I think everybody was out on a power walk and they, it was like two sets of women were walking past each other like, it's the new girls versus the old girls. Like the I was like, what is happening? What I'm now interested to see is if next week the new girls show a vicious side, is it going to become this war and like how quickly Maybe. will Matt extinguish it and who will make it out alive? I don't know. It's interesting, but I it just I want to also point out that um, this is the women, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm only pointing this out because look at last season, mm -hmm. Tasha's season and and Claire's season. Very different season. You had an older group of men. It's harder to get those, you know, like maybe people who are like this is a younger group. And Katie's 29, and Katie's like one and of the Victoria's few, 27, same I will one. Say. Um, and so you have. Like, that's why, you know, like when Noah was, quote unquote, the villain, you had me being like, this guy's not a villain. He's just he's just like, well, I'm not a believer in the age thing, because then you had somebody like Serena P and I think she's 23. Uh, and, it's not a hard yeah, line. I'm just right. saying in you general, the group it, yeah. of men were more were more mature mm -hmm. age or not than this group of women. Yes. And so you had you you didn't have a lot of drama. You didn't have this petty nastiness. And I'm listen, if the guy like if the producers could have gotten that out of them, they would have loved it, but it's just hard to do. You can't make them like be so petty that like these women, and I only point it out because like, it is so ridiculous and we've hit the, driven this point home, how these women have fully embraced this like, you know what, just give me a reason to hate someone. Really, they showed up three weeks after me? Good enough, I fucking hate you. <laughs> you know, like that's how they're acting and they just needed a reason to hate someone and I just, that's just, immature and nasty and you you got that and such a smaller fraction with Tasha's guys and that just is a testament to the maturity of those men versus the maturity of some many of these women mm -hmm. you know I don't believe that I mean I'm thinking back on how uh gosh with Claire and Dale people were like Dale was forced to propose <laughs> I don't I I think that editing can happen of course as it does with any tv show but can you they couldn't it's not like we're Frank and biting and editing all this stuff together to make these people. There's a built in pressure. Things. I mean, yeah. clearly, well, I mean, listen, Chris with, with Claire and Dale, that was as aggressive of a, uh, so here's a ring. I don't know what you want to <laughs> do with it. Kind of like, I, I was actually surprised with Claire and Dale, just how much it made it seem like Chris was almost pressuring the engagement. I was just surprised to see it. I was surprised they aired it. You, you know what I'm saying? Because in my experience, it just, everyone's kind of like, I mean, this sounds nuts, but I guess I'll do it. You know, like huh. it's never been so in my, it, like, it's never, I've never seen it in so many other people's faces. I've never seen it in my face. Like well, there was a pressure. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. It was like, there was a pressure that, uh, that came from just knowing what the show was about, mm. but it was never like, like when Chris was like, Hey, he, like, Chris talked to Claire, Chris talked to Neil Lane. And this is how they aired it, which I just found it was fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then he talked to Dale. <laughs> Everyone knew Dale was going to propose except for Dale. That's how it came across. I don't know if that's how it went down. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know when all the different conversations happened. But regardless of like when he talked, I, I mean, Claire was, Claire wanted Dale. So mm -hmm. I guess I always looked at it as he said, Claire wants to be with you. So, you know. Now it's like the, the only option here would be if you want to do this, this is like where Claire's at. That's I mean, Claire said when Chris said, what do you is what you want next to proposal? Claire said, that's the dumbest question you've ever asked. Me. Oh, I don't <laughs> I don't. I'm just more like Dale shows up on. I mean, I mean, we, they can just talk about Dale and Claire for a moment. Sure. But uh, <laughs> I I don't he's you know, a lot of rumors out there. Dale showed up on a season as naive as anyone, right? Regardless of he wants fame versus, mm. you know, whether Chasen or or Ed or or Noah, you know, like his desire for fame more than, you know, Matt or, you know, okay. all these guys who, you know, go on the show like we talked about. Yeah. Claire decided she liked Dale. Mm -hmm. And Claire is very aggressive with her feelings. He makes it very known. She's very direct. What was Dale going to do in that situation? The criticism about Dale, uh, like what was his intentions were, I he was put, I, I don't know Dale. I don't know anything about Dale, right. but I, he, 
he was put in a, an insane situation that I try just trying to imagine what it would be like having been in that world. Like I can imagine what it, I can see how confused and I don't doubt that he liked Claire, but it was kind of like most of the time people take this leap of faith after nine weeks of, yeah. and he did it in like two and he's like, I guess I like you. And I'm just saying that's an insane, an, an insane situation. And then he and then he got to know Claire afterwards. I mean, I just I feel for Dale in that regard. You're right that that I we feel for Dale. <laughs> I, and the shows the show's a reality show. Yeah. No, I know. But I'm just, you know, that was a very unique situation where I was watching it and being like, what is Dale gonna do? It was kind of like Cassie and Colton. Oh. It was like, what do you do with a bunch of cameras on you in the lead? of the show who's kind of in charge or it feels like that to you is like yeah. kind of saying, this is what I want. It's very hard to go against the grain. Well, I'm not saying Cassie didn't like Colton. I'm not saying Dale didn't like Claire. I'm right. saying that probably wouldn't have been their choice. And that was never gonna happen. But if the conversation went to Dale first, but whatever you want, man, it's cool. Whatever you want, Cassie, it's cool. Uh, I think the outcome would have been very different. I think it was, in those situations, they were <laughs> the last to know. And they're like, you know, I like but you. You're so. just a, but you don't know when, like, I, I just, I guess I'm just also going back to what you said before. I don't know the order of all the conversations. I don't know. If I don't like, know either. I'm just the order what of I the conversations or like what doesn't make it onto air, what more happens in conversations. So it's also hard to say all It's things. more specifically to like what Colton and, and Claire wanted. And it's just kind of a, it's just like the, the people go on this show know very little and it's just all. I think Dale made his own choice to get engaged, but I don't think he would have done it if it was presented differently to him. That's all. And I think well, Claire's is anyone to blame for that because it was. Yeah, I, I guess we also have to believe that adult people have their own faculties about them. Dale's a 32 year old guy, you know, he's a I mean, we can't be like you do what you want to do. And also I'm well, not saying Dale. I just. Dale made his, yes, Dale. I'm not saying Dale was forced to get engaged by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just saying it's kind of like, I guess, fuck it. We'll see what happens. Oh, I, I feel quite, yeah, sure. I think we're, we're both saying the same yeah, thing. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. It's just, it's just kind of, it mates for a messy city. It was, I guess when it comes to Claire and Dale, it was always going to end this way. I feel like. Oh, I agree. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I think so. I, I mean, with them breaking up, yes, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess I just feel bad for, you know, the, like what, we're, like who knows about, like, do you know if Dale was cheating on Claire? As far as I know, he was not. Okay. And what were you, and where are these rumors coming from? I don't know. Are like coming from Claire? Uh, I don't know. As far as I know, Dale was, I mean, it's been like so much back and forth. I, I'm not even a hundred percent sure that I'm updated on all the headlines across all the outlets, but the reporting that we had at entertainment tonight was that Dale did not cheat on Claire at all. Um, and that he had real feelings for Claire and that the, but then things got to an unhealthy place in the relationship. And, you know, I, uh, I think that, I always really want, I remember saying on your podcast, I really wanted to interview them together, but they didn't do interviews after their, uh, I think they did a really quick thing on GMA and they did a, a People magazine spread, but uh, they didn't do a lot of interviews and I really wanted to talk to them both together. I had questions, but you know, here we are. I don't, I'm not surprised by the outcome, but I wish them both the best and we'll see what's next for the, the Dale Moss brand and the Claire Crawley love story. <laughs> Probably not much for either. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I wish, I hope Claire finds lo her love. She deserves it um, as much as anyone. You had a chance to interview Sarah. Yes. Um, she certainly made in one episode a, a, a lasting impression in terms of how she handled it. Mm -hmm. There's obviously her story about her father. It, mm -hmm. you know, again, kind of almost came across as her father. While I get why she left, it's not really why she left. She left just she got bullied out of the house. But it mm -hmm. also, Sarah came across as a, a drama queen. Like, mm -hmm. and I was curious what you thought of it, especially after uh, having a chance to talk to her. Yes. Having a chance to talk to her, you know, I think people, when you do get a minute to interview somebody, then you, 
I mean, of course, you see the more human side of them. Sure. You're talking to them in person instead of them being on a TV screen. Um, I like I had to ask her some tough questions because I think the viewers had tough questions for her after watching her. Ultimately, I asked her, why did you leave? And she said her family was the reason that she left. That's what she said. You're, you look to the side. <laughs> you have questions. Let me. What did you think? What was your take? Because I didn't get it. Let me get yours before I explain. Well, you can't believe her father was the reason she left because her father was sick when she came on. Mm -hmm. Many of these women, as yeah. we talked about, have proven to be very nasty, mm -hmm. aggressive bullies. And they flat out threatened her and bullied her out of the house. Yeah. Fine. I think Sarah was guilty in the sense that she clearly came across as someone who is used to getting attention, used to getting what she wants. Uh, she just creates her own. She was She's a drama queen. Mm -hmm. And then faced the wrath of these women and thought, I don't want to deal with this. This is not going how I expected. My dad, like, and like, mm. it's like her dad, like, was the reason it was, I, I buy the fact that it's like, why would I, like, I'm just, you know what? I'm just put it in, just put things into perspective for me. Yes. But I do think it had she not been bullied, had she been welcomed, had well, she I been. I asked, were you prepared to stay for two months? And she said, yes. Okay. So, so I yeah. think that. That's true. I would my summation of it would be that what you just said is right that it put things in perspective for her like if this is what I'm experiencing why am I here when I should be home. The women made a fatal mistake is like Sarah was Sarah's decisions and actions were very wrong mm. in terms of how she disengaged from the group and like completely just acted like no one else was going to she couldn't handle that. Let people bury themselves in, mm -hmm. in a sense, let people dig their own grave. And the women made a very big mistake on Sarah was wrong, but because they were so nasty, then you made her look sympathetic because mm -hmm. of the situation she's going in. Had they not, had they not been so mean to her, Sarah would have been very unlikable and, and, mm -hmm. and very much the villain. And, and that's the mistake these women made because you're like, who's the villain and things like that. Had Sarah stayed, had they not bullied her, we would hate Sarah. If I'm a, viewer we would be very much not team sarah she would be very much the villain the focus would be on sarah they would all yeah like, and now that sarah is gone that's why you have this kind of you know sharks versus jets kind of <laughs> uh kind I'm of so ready for you to be a producer nick are you ready no i'm I, I'm, I'm just here to critique when are you gonna sign on uh they don't need they don't need me um but yeah, I mean, the women should have just <laughs> shut their mouths and let Sarah suck, and 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 they now put the target on their backs. And here we are. We're all and here. We are. Um, and and by the way, well then, honestly, kind of the reverse happened because Sarah took a step back, and now these other women have revealed more about themselves. Like I feel totally yeah. differently about Anna this week than I did last week. Yeah, it's really interesting. Trash. <laughs> Before she was like just someone Matt wasn't into, mm -hmm. and now she's a trash human. Yikes! I have no problem saying that. Listen, if if I'm certain of this, maybe Anna's listening to this. Maybe certainly someone Anna knows is listening to this. A cousin, a friend. They're gonna go back to Anna, and I'm gonna give you some advice to give to Anna. Okay. When you go on tell all, don't justify your actions. Oh. Just apologize. Own up to what you did. Go on and say I've watched it back. I'm disgusted with my behavior. No one should act that way. It was like, say all the things. Own it. Own it. I always say own Don't, it. And, and that's all you should do. She, I, I hope that Anna watches it and 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 is is just as disgusted with how she looks as we are. I hope she doesn't blame the show or blame producers, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera, because like things were condensed to like, but she clearly said these things. I hope that uh, she does. I don't expect that from Victoria. There's no way. There's, <laughs> and that's where Victoria, Anna might be slightly better because I, I, I hope that Anna's capable to ground into this that you talked about. Yeah. Like Victoria, there's no way. I don't, I could say, I could tell Victoria to apologize. She's coming out guns a blazing at tell all. I promise you that. Think? There's no way. Okay. There's no way she'll be contrite. Okay. Zero chance. Okay. There will be more of the same. It will be in, it will be the Victoria show of just nonsense. And then we'll see her on paradise with a queen, a crown made of seashells. I, I don't probably, <laughs> I hope not because like, listen, I, as a viewer, I'm thankful for Victoria in that sense. She's great TV. Mm -hmm. She'll be in our top 10 
you know, or power rankings because she is a prominent character. Well, if she's going to go on Paradise, you, there has to be some believability that people would, anyone would want. Well, to that's what I'm her. saying. She yeah. might be, it, it, she might have really burned out because, you know, a lot of times in Paradise, you like to see the kind of like the the redemption story. Sure. There's nothing redeeming about Victoria. You know what? But I I'm really a believer that like I'll I'll give you a second chance if you apologize, you know? I mean, I'm I, I just I, don't think she has it in her. Yeah. I think Anna does. I remember I, I was speaking of another Victoria cuz people keep being like we had two Victorias back to back. Um Victoria Fuller on Peter Weber's tell all. What a Great. 180. What a, a just mature owning things uh, like I would. And I remember being captivated by that because I think we all love a redemption story. But, but yeah. But if you go back and watch yeah. Victoria and Peter season, you can't even compare oh, the two. No. Victorias. I'm just saying I, I'm going to sit here and say it. If Queen Victoria comes on the tell all and if she apologizes and she says all the things you just told Anna to say, I'll give her a second chance. I will. So all she has, so you're saying all she has to do is show up and just say I'm sorry. How do you ex- like? What's the what's the difference between what you just said and that? I'm saying if she shows up at the tell all, if she gives real heartfelt apologies to many women, if she talks about how what she's learned from her behavior, how wrong she was. Yes, I would give her a second chance because I I think people deserve second chances. I, I agree with you there, but. <laughs> Because, like you said, Anna on the ground in this Victoria Fuller on Peter season, right? I, you're like, saying you're just saying I, you don't think Queen Victoria the, the, is the, 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 you don't the, think we're gonna see it. The rumor mill for like I, I'm just kind of disgusted with Anna knowing that she's spreading this toxic rumor. That being said, she even said I'm losing my mind. Fine, but Vic. Victoria, like oh, Victoria, Victoria Fuller yeah, was Queen. losing her mind the whole damn time. Yeah. And again, that's not an excuse for sometimes for for acting. But Victoria, the Queen Victoria, yeah. is not losing her mind at all. Oh no, I know. It's I mean, as I said, I'm not. So disagreeing if, with if you that she it won't apologizes, happen. I oh, guess I have a far even... more follow up questions to be like, are you really sorry? Are you just like you know what I'm saying? Like you I don't won't know. Even believe it. I don't know what she would have. She could say for me to be like, okay, I I I don't think she will. So I don't think we're gonna have to worry about it. <laughs> But I, if she does, then I will, then I'll be, then why? Because Anna can go on and say, I was so insecure. Mm-hmm. I was so, like, but if, if, uh, if the queen does that, I, she, she has been toxic since she got out of limo mm-hmm. and, and Anna has But there have been moments when, like when she did her little erotic love story, the other women were cheering for her and laughing. The women and, like her. Yeah. So it's the mean, it's, like the group kind of sucks. Like Victoria's <laughs> not the only trash person there. there there's I'm a lot of saying, trash Nick, people. Look, she said to Katie, I can express myself however I want and say whatever I want. I'm not holding my breath for an apology. I'm just saying that I'll give people a second chance. I, I will. I, generally, I am too. <laughs> I, I just don't know what Victoria can say to get me to believe her. Well, I guess we're going to find out. Who's your top four? Uh, that I think Matt's going to pick. You know, we yeah. did this. By the way, you put Spencer in the top four in Clarentatious season. I did, yeah. And I told you I didn't think I, that that you was going to happen. I guess it was I, right. I, I've been very spoiler free the past few seasons. Yes. It's been fun guessing. I, I'm, I'm, you know, I bet like 75%. Spencer, fall from grace. A fall from grace. You know, he, he, uh, he had one episode. Um, I think that in terms of who I think Matt seems to like, uh, definitely, obviously, Brie. Uh, I think he really liked Serena P. Really yeah. likes Michelle. Um, Rachel, he seems to still be very into. Um, I think there's a couple maybe that we still haven't seen yet. Kit, he, I, like, I asked him about Kit in an interview, and he, like, kind of, gave a big smile when he was talking about her, but we haven't seen a ton of her the last couple episodes. So I'm interested in what we always see there. a little bit. Yeah. Because yeah. I, cause we, she, she is, she did make one pretty mean comment to Sarah, but she wasn't really involved in the drama this week. I yeah. he, Matt did have kind of a moment with Jasenia. I don't know what would happen. We didn't see her as we said, involved in the drama this week. Maybe more from Jasenia. He did oh, kiss uh, her with his eyes. We haven't a uh, Piper who I Piper. was last, last week. I, I kind of thought was like, uh, just going to be gone. It was striking when she like I she really caught me off guard. I uh she she looked very good in that that gown. She's very striking. And then Matt and her had a nice conversation, mm-hmm. which was like, okay, this is not nothing. So like, I definitely I could be wrong on Piper being like like a, a non 
like not relevant. Mm -hmm. I think she had a nice moment and she's, you know, very, very beautiful. And she, she definitely got more airtime. So I'm curious to see if maybe something happens with Piper. I was very just thrown off by the Chelsea group date, Rose. Yeah. Um, but maybe who knows? Um, Matt's throw. I, I agree. Matt has a poker face. I don't think we'll see Katie in the top. I think they have like a friend vibe. I haven't seen any chemistry. Uh, the only thing I'm certain about this season <laughs> is that Katie is going to go home the week before hometowns. Wow. Okay. The rest. He put it in writing. Who knows? I, I'm, I've never been more certain about anything in my life. I have never been more certain that Victoria Fuller or Vic, I've never been more certain that Queen Victoria will emerge the fan favorite. <laughs> you think she's going to be a fan favorite? I being funny. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just go insane, Nick. That's how I feel right now with this show. Well, that's a good thing. They're keeping us on our They're toes. Keeping us on our toes. So my my top four last last week was the same, except I put Serena in there because my whole thing last week was she caught us off guard, but mm. that was a date where she didn't have a sad story kind of thing. So if you're on a date and there's no like tragic story, it's a good chance the lead's into you. I thought they had some of the best conversations I've ever seen on the show, yeah. period. But then Michelle kind of had a very similar date. Not, you know, mm -hmm. just a nice, normal, well-rounded person. And there's nothing wrong with a sad story, yeah. but like we do love our sad stories. And so if you have a sad story, mm -hmm. you might get an opportunity to express it, especially mm -hmm. if there's some interest. And then Michelle, and so you get Michelle and Serena P. Right now, I mean, Michelle, I'm a huge fan of. She came out, I just think she's... It, Really, she almost seems like, how did they find Michelle? Like, why did she agree to go on this show? Because Matt is the most desirable bachelor there's there, ever been in there, history. And a record number of women applied. And he is the 25th milestone bachelor. And I can just keep going. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I think she's she's great. And so I guess right now I'm going to put Michelle in my top four. But okay. who knows? I'm confident in the Rachel, Brie, and Abigail. Oh, I, oh my God! I don't think I said Abigail. God, where I I like Abigail, but yeah, she'll know. right now. This this is all about the drama, mm -hmm. and yeah, I don't, I will say Abigail's been like you get the first impression, Rose. It's totally fine yeah. that like she's not getting a ton of airtime now. We can kind of sideline her while the drama goes on, and we certainly want to keep her away from it. But she definitely needs if she needs a group date, Rose, or a one on one soon. pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm gonna get a little worried about that prediction. Mm -hmm. But because uh, she, we haven't seen a ton of her. But I think she's too likable, and her story is, you know, just great. I also want to see more of Kit because she's like Cynthia Rowley's daughter. Do you know this? I've, I've heard. I don't know who Cynthia Rowley is, but I know she's somebody. She's a design. I just want to hear more about Kit's life. That's all. <laughs> no, I agree. Uh, but I think Kit's generally kind of. Immature. I I, mm. I know people who have met her and they're if they they in the Chicago social scene. No, New York. Uh, just because uh, um, I was just like, who like I tell me like, what do you know? And they're just right. like, she was fine, not mm -hmm. very impressionable, not okay. offensive, just eh. Well, I can't wait to see what happens on the next episode of Matt and the Mean Girls, our new favorite sitcom. I'm entertained this season, and so if nothing else, they're doing their job. Oh, Let's we go. didn't even talk about it. We we don't have much. Oh, we don't have okay. any time. I've, but I the boxing, have all we the didn't time in the we world. didn't talk about boxing. And I just got to say, they were really hitting each other oh in the face. Oh my gosh, that was. What, did you? Because we've seen like on. Uh, were you on Caitlyn's season when it was this wrestling date? No, I missed all that. You was great. That. I missed the boxing. I missed the wrestling. Have did, was it surprisingly aggressive to you? Did you feel like they were hitting on a level harder than you thought they were? Um, on this? On uh, yes. Yeah. yeah, they were like going for each other's faces. I was like, I could never do this. I would be like, can we, can we do like a b slam poetry battle? Like, I, <laughs> this is so. I was surprised by how hard our girl Katie went in this. It's, oh, that yeah, Kate. No, Katie's Katie is not afraid of anything. I, I guess know. it seemed like everybody really had some aggression to work out, and Mad went ahead and ended it. I, I think we needed to end it. Well, yeah. You know, once, once one of his favorites got hit in the face, he was like, "All right, shut yeah, it down." Not Serena P. Yeah. And it also felt like them getting that aggression out didn't really do anything. <laughs> I thought yeah. they were going to come back a little toned down. No, didn't really do anything. No. Well, anyway, Lauren, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to be thank recapping you. these episodes <laughs> with you. I, I hope. I, you know, it's weird. I, I want the drama to continue. I hope that some of these women are able to redeem themselves because it was a very um, disappointing 
and they're I was very disappointed. I feel like this like I feel like parent, when they needed to bring you in and be like Nick is disappointed. No, I would never have <laughs> stopped him. I would have let it play out, but I'm still be like, oh, I'm disappointed in you. It is. It's great TV, but <laughs> I know it's I I'm excited to see where next week goes in terms of if some of the new women show like viciousness of their own, or if this gives an opportunity for these new women to really take a step up because the OGs are being so over the top mean. Well, it'll be really interesting if they try going after Michelle. Because <gasps> I think a Michelle is above that mm-hmm. drama, and Matt really likes her, and I think that's where you know when Matt steps in, you know that's yeah. for. But I think it might just be enough to be like, hey, they're spreading toxic rumors about mm-hmm. being an escort, and I was gonna shut it down <sighs> real quick. There was so much to talk about this episode that we wanted to to read excerpts from Chris's book. Do you read them to Chris? Does he read them to you? I think I'm going to start making him read them to me. One regret he has is he wishes he'd done the uh, the audiobook version himself. So maybe we'll see that in the future. Wait, he didn't. He didn't. But there is no it because he wrote this a few years ago. People have been messaging may, may me asking it? if it's me on the cover. It's not. I he wrote this a, a, a couple years back. Let's see if yeah. Uh, please just read to us whatever you find. And he. He wrote this whole thing by himself? He wrote no ghostwriter or anything like that? I don't know. This was before we were together. This no, book had like a resurgence. Um, let's just let's just I've I've flicked to a random page here. He won't catch me. It's not catching you I'm worried about. He's a hell of a shot, you know. Oh god, there's guns. Okay, wow. <laughs> it's the Oklahoma in him, the Texas. Oh gosh. Okay, flip to another page. I just can't believe I'm kissing you, he murmured. It's like you're not real. This is some kind of dream. And in a few more minutes, I'm going to wake up back home. I'm real, she said. I'm a promise. I'm real if you are. <gasps> okay. Okay. Make sure to check out Chris's book. Okay. Ooh, I want to be real. All right. Well, thank you for having me to your home. Thanks for coming. I can't wait to get the tour right when we're done here. I'm about to see what Nick Vial's bedroom looks like. There you we'll go. report back. Um... <laughs> Okay. Thank you guys for listening. Um, as always, um, to tune in uh, tomorrow for Ricky Williams and, and astrology, horoscopes, and life. Uh, you, you will not want to miss that. Go check out our Ask Nick episodes. Uh, sending your questions at asknick at caspi.com, cast with a K. Uh, thank you for uh, putting up with any technical difficulties we might have on this episode, given that we had a power outage at the studio. So hopefully things all come together. And we should be back in there um, next time. Other than that, um, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, where can people yes, find you? Yes, you can follow me at Lauren Zima on all the social platforms. And um, check out Roses and Rosé, which is my Bachelor review show. It is not a podcast. It's a show show. It's on Entertainment Tonight's YouTube channel. <laughs> let's go see uh, Let's go. Okay. Let's go see Nick Files' house. All right. Let's go check out the actual Bachelor mansion. Oh.